Breaking news, we've got some uh, headlines coming out of Capitol Hill. The Joint Economic Committee is holding a hearing right now on the nation's leadership in robotics. That is Maggie Hassan of uh, New Hampshire speaking right now. The C Oh, sorry, that's the witness. Maggie Hassan is questioning her. Uh, CEOs testifying include Evan Beard of Standard Bots, based in New York. They do business with a bunch of defense companies here, and he is urging the U.S. to make it easier to become a leader in robotics by enabling all sorts of uh, issues that will help them start to grow even more. And this comes as one of the nation's top medical device makers announced that it is investing heavily in its robotic-assisted surgery product, Hugo. Medtronic stock hitting a 52-week high at this hour after it raised its annual sales growth forecast. Look at this jump in the stock. Fiscal second quarter earnings beat estimates powered higher by its cardiovascular business. But now the CEO of Medtronic, Jeff Martha, really wants to push ahead specifically in robotics. He is here right now. Let's talk about this. They're, they're talking about it at this moment on Capitol Hill. Congress is interested. Suddenly, tech is very much at the forefront. What are you doing and where are you doing it with Hugo? Sure. Well, first of all, Liz, it's uh, great to be here again, and especially coming off of a, of a good quarter. Where we had a lot of new innovation coming to market across several different areas that's driving up our growth, and robotics is, is one of those areas. So we've got uh, a number of robots, uh, several on the market today. We lead globally. Uh, with an orthopedics robot for back surgery. Uh, we have a robot that also does some cranial surgery. And we're entering in the U.S. Uh, a, a large market, which they call the soft tissue surgery, which think about like a hysterectomy or prostatectomy that's done robotically. So, you know, that, that product is called Hugo, and it's before the FDA right now, and we're anticipating uh, an approval here uh, in the next couple of, of months. And look, robotics is a big, not just outside of healthcare, but in, in a healthcare it's a big macro trend and it's really just helping, you know, physicians through the case. And it's really what I would say that full potential, it's going to democratize good healthcare around the world. Well, sure. And uh, sometimes robotics are extraordinarily helpful to surgeons. Let me just ask you, because it is being used right now in Europe. As you said, you're waiting on approval in the United States. If you could have the ear of some of the members of that Joint Economic Committee to make it easier for you to manufacture Hugo here and other robotic options, what would you say to them? What do you need as a CEO who's hit by things like tariffs for a lot of incoming product? Well, look, you know, we actually do a lot of manufacturing here, including uh, robotics. We actually do make Hugo uh, in the Midwest of the United States. And, uh, you know, the medtech industry actually does quite a bit and Medtronic does quite a bit of, of manufacturing here in the U.S. And we're, we're a big exporter. You know, when it comes to robotics, I think manufacturing in the U.S., one of the critical uh, pieces of that is having you know, making sure we have access to the su supply chain that's, rel that's important to manufacturing those robots. But it can be done. We're doing it. And I'm optimistic we can continue to do it. Um, let's talk about other real opportunities here. There are a lot of people with bladder issues. You've got a possibility here that could become just absolutely huge. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I'm sure there are a few of our viewers who are more than a few who are affected by this. Well, thanks for bringing that up. That is one of the new multi-billion dollar markets that we're entering. It's it's overactive bladder. Just in the U.S., just a few stats, there's about 45 million people that suffer from overactive bladder. And this new device called AltaViva uh, addresses about 20 million of those patients, 15 to 20 million that suffer from incontinence. And what this little device does is it goes just under the skin around your ankle. Uh, and it really, you know, is very effective at, at mitigating or even like alleviating and solving those those symptoms that you get from overactive bladder. It's a quick procedure, uh, very efficient. Uh, and it's one of these things, it's what we call passive for patients. You set it and forget it. It goes in the ankle. Uh, we, we, you know, you, you leave the physician's office with it, with it turned on. You don't really need to do anything. It needs recharged maybe once a year, maybe twice at the most. Uh, and as we present this option to, co to consumers, to patients, among all the different options they have, whether it be some sort of pharmacological option or other options, they're really gravitating to this. And we're, we're really excited as patients, it's improving their quality of life. Uh, and they're just starting to understand now with this device, 
uh, they're returning to their day activities of daily living, and they're really starting to, to see just how far they can go when, when they don't have to go. Jeff, whether it's for that or anything else that you do, uh, is insurance going to pay for these things? We just heard from Congress, who refused to extend the ACA subsidies, so there's a huge question about costs going up when it comes to premiums. What are you hearing from patients, from doctors, and are you concerned? Look, our hospital customers, and we sell mainly to hospitals and then also to patients directly, but mainly to hospitals, and yes, they're concerned about the ACA cuts and what that means for them. However, the, the therapies that, that we provide tend to be backed by, you know, very robust clinical data that's been peer reviewed, reviewed by the FDA and other regulatory bodies around the world for both safety and efficacy. And these type of therapies, these type of products tend to be reimbursed uh, because of that, that solid, you know, you know, uh, in, you know, that's all the data that pr proves their safety and effectiveness. Well, Jeff, it's a good day for the shareholders and uh, certainly a good day for you as the CEO. Nice move on the stock. And uh, we'll watch all of the developments that uh, the fine people at Medtronics are coming up with. So thank you. Thank you, Liz. Good to be here.